Well, we're joined now by Hall of Fame promoter, the man we were talking about just now, who was at that press conference, Frank Warren. A very good evening, Frank. How are you? I'm fine, thanks, Gareth. Good evening, but to you and Spencer. Hey, Frank, how's things, mate? Can't complain, mate. Everything's good. Lovely. Um, I was just saying, Frank, before we, before you came on there, how I felt when I was up there in Morecambe. Yourself, Spencer Brown, Sugar Hill, John Fury, and particularly Tyson Fury, completely on point, absolutely focused. It was 40 days from Wednesday to the event on May the 18th, this unprecedented, undisputed heavyweight event in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Um, there feels like, I don't know, like, with a cut eye, it refocused the team in many ways, even more so than before? I don't know. Look, you know, it, it, contrary to all the rubbish that was being put out, you know, before uh, well, when he got cut, he was training very, very hard for that fight and he was in great shape and he'd come to more or less at the end of his sparring when he got the cut. So he was on point as far as Peking's concern, physical condition, and uh, obviously the cut delayed the fight to the 18th. Um, and he took a couple of weeks off, but he came back into training again where he hasn't got to lose any weight. He's not mm. fight, He's not training to make weight. He's on. He's, he's on. He actually could fight tomorrow with his weight. He's, he's got a good weight at the moment. And the problem, if it is a problem, is at the moment that he doesn't peak too soon. Yes, he was mm. saying that, wasn't he? Yeah, he's, he, jump, yeah. he's jumping out of his skin. You only got to yeah. look at him. He looks. He looks in tremendous shape. You only got to look at his face facially. How, how cut he is. Um, and and you know, and I've, I've sort of been around him enough now to know when he's in a good place, and he's in a very good place. And if he continues to do what he's doing, I think you're going to see a vintage Tyson Fury on the 18th. In Riyadh, without a doubt. Do you think he's um, going to put it on Alexander Usyk and not allow Usyk to box his way into the match? I, I, look, he, you know, he, he, he's Tyson's changed his style so many times over the years. You go back to when he went to Germany, when he fought against Klitschko. You know, he went out there and, 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 and boxed, jabbed his way through, and basically give give Klitschko a, a guy who's quite, who's a very good boxer himself. He gave him a bit of a boxing lesson. Well, he took yeah, his jab that, away and took the right hand yeah, away, didn't he, that, from that, Klitschko, that's yeah. What he did. yeah. And he's a very smart guy, and he goes out to the States, and he goes and fights a guy who statistically is the hardest punching heavyweight in the last, you know, 40, 50 years, whatever it is, and in Deontay Wilder, and done him his own game. Mm. Yeah, he's so one of the... That, 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 so what, what will he do when he gets in there? You know, you... Usyk is going to be fit as a butcher's dog. He's been a heavyweight now for four years, so you know that he's comfortable now. He's settled into being a heavyweight, and he's a competitor. He's undefeated like Tyson, and you know he's not coming to just make up the numbers. So you're going to get a good fight, but I just believe that Tyson, when Tyson's at his best, you know, that, that is a problem for anybody, and I just feel that he's got the... Although Usyk's got a very good boxing brain, I think Tyson has got. I, I think it's got more, more armory and more in his in, in his in his armory than than Usyk has. Yeah, that's the the brilliant thing about this contest, Frank. When you get these contests of this magnitude, we got this undisputed fight with two unbelievable boxers that have got ph phenomenal IQs. And you look at that and you go, adaptability is key. And who can adapt to the situation can win the fight. And both of them guys actually can do that. And that's why I say it's not just about adaptability here. And size really does matter in this contest because Fury, like Usyk, has never come up with someone of, of a boxing IQ like Tyson Fury because very good at the feint in controlling the space. He can take a guy into deep water or he can box on the back foot, as you've already highlighted. But, you know, the size is going to be key here. And that's why I fancy Fury in this contest, because he is equally as good as, like, all right, Alexander Usyk's got a great boxing IQ, but Fury's very smart himself. It's a fascinating contest for all those reasons. Well, it is. But, you know, size, I thought, would be one of the factors in the fight, in, in both fights against um, the fight that, fight that he had against AJ. But he dealt with it. He dealt with a guy who had a superior reach, uh, Usyk, in, in, in AJ. He, he out-jabbed him, and he was out-jabbing him on the outside. And I thought he would be trying to get inside with him, but he was he was boxing well out on the outside. So you know he's he, he's capable of doing that. But I just think that Tyson, um, with a great respect to AJ, I think, I think it, first of all, he's a winning fighter. And secondly, I think that... Um, I just feel that he feel he feels that he can deal with Usyk. I mean, he studied him. 
He knows what he's got in front of him. It's not like he's going into the unknown. They both, the both of them, have, have probably studied each other to, as, as as much as you can uh, preparing for a fight. But I just think Tyson Tyson knows what he has to do in this fight, and I think he's capable of sticking to plan A or B if needed. And I'm and I know that, and I know that he's uh, I feel that he's got the better box as I say the, the better tools in the box to deal with him. That, that, that was self-evident on um, Wednesday, talking to all of you, that that, that diligence had been done <clears throat> in the background. Before you came on, Frank, um, Spencer and I were having a little debate about who of these three cruiserweights that moved up to heavyweight would you rate as the best in their prime out of these three? Evander Holyfield, David Hay and Alexander Usyk. We did a round robin of who would beat who, each other, um, when they moved up to heavyweight, who's your best out of those three? Holyfield. But we're, same we as were us. the same. Then same Usyk, as us. Then Usyk, then Hay, we were saying. Yeah, well, I don't know you. I mean, you know, David Hay did what he had to do. We're sick. Look, Usyk's having his, you know, this is a massive, massive test for him. It is. Because I think he's fighting the best heavyweight of his generation. Mm. Holyfield fought the best heavyweight of his generation. And, you know, <laughs> I've got to be honest. There was a, you know, that, that first fight he had with... Um, Lewis, there was a draw. You and I yeah. the same. We yeah, both thought I, he I won, didn't we? I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. Think, you know, and even if there weren't nothing in it, that's a guy who's fighting the best of his generation. Mm. And, he, you know, and you look at even him when he went in with... Uh, Riddick Bowe. Mike Tyson. Uh, when Riddick, he with Riddick yeah, Bowe. I mean, yeah. he's, you know, he, he's, he was a phenomenal warrior, one of yeah. my favourite fighters. Yeah. And D David did what he had to do, but he didn't fight anybody at that, at, at that level at the time. Sure, sure. What, what, would, what would Fury have done with Evander Holyfield in his prime then? Been a great fight. I'll, I fancy Tyson, because I think... I just think Tyson's... Tyson's a phenomenally big guy. We're all and, agreeing and, on everything. We, we're we're all Frank. agreeing on all of it tonight. We've and, agreed and, on all and, of it. And and I think the thing is with Tyson, not only is he a phenomenal big guy, you know, he he he, he deceives people. You know, people, who would expect him when he gets in the ring to be as fast as he is? Switch hitter. You know, normally big guys like that. You look at some of the big, the big sort of six nine, six ten guys. They were quite looked quite. You know, they were lumber. They lumbered a bit and. You know they weren't fast than that, and Tyson moves around, moves around like a, you know, he's very agile, mm, and yeah. and I just feel that he, I just feel that, you know, all these guys at any generation, he would be there with them. I mean, in any generation, he'd be one of the one of the best there, no doubt about it. Frank, we're going to ask you about the five by five update. Obviously, it's a big press conference on on Monday in London. Um, can we just ask you first of all about um, Anthony Yard putting out there? He's a free agent. We've got Joshua Boatsy in the studio later tonight. Now, Anthony's been with you, I think, his entire career from memory, mm, and you've had a very correct. close relationship with him. Put him in world title fights. What what's happened there? I don't know. You know, I've got to be honest. Yeah, I don't know. They, 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 you know, he's put this statement out that he's con he's been advised that his contract's at an end, and my position is, or Queensbury's position is, it isn't at an end, and that's where we are. And uh, and it's a bit frustrating because we did agree terms with uh, with Josh. I mean, in fact, he texted me last week. I don't. I mean, out of the blue, I got a text off him asking me what's going on. Mm. And I just said to him, you know, we're still negotiating. And the next day, that was put out by Anthony, um, and it's quite disappointing. And 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 I'm, I'm going to say how it is now. I feel he's been badly, badly advised. Mm. But listen, so, you know, it's not the first time, and I'm sure it won't be the last. Mm. Down the line, you know, people say, "Oh, that guy who advised me or told me this, it's, it's not how, quite how it worked out." And all I want to do with him is really simple. I just want to, I want to get something done. I, I, I I, I have I was very very fond of him as a, as 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 a person as a boxer. I mean I, I don't believe anybody has been for somebody who only had was it eleven or twelve amateur fights. Yeah. He's been pushed and put into some good positions. He's been put mm. into. Yeah. And I'm very disappointed we're in this in where we are. But look, it is what it is. I can't change it. The only one who can change it is himself. When we get round the table, or unfortunately we're going to have to get it, get it sorted out. Through other means, and the other means are just, uh, uh, you know, nobody wants to well, go it's down. It's just a ball's ache, isn't it? Because it involves lawyers. Um, Frank, Monday, big press conference, five by five. Uh, you're not going to spill the beans this late, but we, uh, can we expect something massive? Obviously, better be Evan Bivol uh, headlining the card, but you against Eddie Hearn, five versus five. 
can we expect to be blown away on Monday? Well, you are blown away from day one because, as you just said, you've got the unification fight for four belts on the line, uh, topping the bill on the on the first of first of July, in uh, sorry first of June in Riyadh. That in itself is a massive, massive event. And then obviously we got the the the, the rivalry the, uh, from which has gone on for quite a few decades between uh, um, his dad and me and you know uh, Warren the Hearns you know, match from Queensbury, whatever way you want to look at it, the big rivalry that and we've got a, we both of us got some really exciting talent and good fighters in our respective camps and we we the, the weights have been picked now and we we've got our fighters all 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 ready to go and we'll be announcing that on Monday and I can assure you there's some really, really good quality fifty fifty events there. But fifty fifty fights I should say. They're brilliant. It's a brilliant well. I think concept. they are all are events in in. It's like six events by they're the sound of it. Yeah, they're all headliners on their own. Yeah, yeah we're Absolutely. hearing it's you know, just you know. And, yeah. and, that, and 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 this. And I've got to be honest. This would not be happening because one, you know, financially we couldn't do this. We're on a big card like this. It won't be happening unless it was part of the Riyadh season and His Excellency, his seller, his team, everybody getting behind it to make it happen. So we. You know, boxing's in a real renaissance period at the moment, and it's just in such a good place. And and as I say, I'm 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 really really looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to Monday, and I am looking forward to the first of June because a lot's at stake. There's some serious bragging rights going to be. Um, there we go. The rivalry's <laughs> coming to <laughs> the voice <laughs> change. Keep, there. Keep, keep your pipe and slippers on for now. We'll <laughs> keep your ammo in there. Keep yeah, your powder yeah, dry yeah, for yeah, Monday, yeah, Lord yeah, Warren. Yeah. I told him that. I said, pipe and slippers, it's all off. It'll be off for all the <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to see you on Monday. Thanks, as always, for Thanks, taking brother. time out on your Saturday night to join us, Frank. Cheers, Frank. Oh, Have a good evening. Bye, Cheers, brother. thank you. Bye. You're listening to Fight Night on Talk Sport with William Hill. Get epic value with William Hill, 18 plus, begambleaware.org. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.